generation with dependent types. I think this is not working. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, I'm Kenichi Asai. Um, well, this is actually the work, uh, PhD work of my colleague Yoyo, and she was going to come here uh, to present her work, but unfortunately she couldn't make it, so um, I'm giving the talk on behalf of her using her slides. I try to convey her messages as much as possible. Okay, so we continue the discussion of shift and reset, but in a richer language. So our goal is here, goal here is to use shift and reset and dependent types in the same language. But what, what is it good for? Well, if we use shift and reset, um, we, we learn that we can express any monadic effect. So if we, for example, we can use the choose function to use um, uh, implement a non-deterministic program. And if we have um, dependent types in, in the same language too, it means that we can reason about this kind of programs in the same language. So for example, if we have three choices in the input, pro input program, then we have three uh, output candidates. And so we can say that for all L, the number of elements in the input is equal to the number of candidate uh, results. And so this is one example. And another example would be that uh, to maintain strong invariance in effectful programs. So if we use um, dependent types, we can um, define a typeful terms um, which permits only the typed term to be defined. And using that, we can define a, an, an evaluator for such a language uh, without, um, in, in a tagless form. If we have shift and reset in these languages, this language, then we can implement such evaluator that supports um, um, exception handling too. Okay, so there are certainly many things we can do. But okay, what, what will happen when we mix these two things up? Um, in 2005, Hugo Elbram showed that, uh, built a language where we have strong sums and undelimited control operator called CC. And he showed that this lang language is inconsistent in that any proposition have, is inhabitant. And this re result is derived by defining a term, defi defining an existential proof where, it, uh, where apparently the proof is witnessed by zero, but eventually um, this, this, sorry, this one is fake um, witness and the real, Real witness is sorry. <clears throat> um, real one is the real witness as returned, and th this kind of things is was was possible because um, the course CC discards the fake um, witness and returns the real um, witness, and by by combining these two with fake and real witnesses using a reflective, reflexivity um, proof, we can prove one equals zero, which is not true. So this, kind, this is quite unfortunate. But several years later, Elvan also showed that if we introduce purity restriction into the language, then the inconsistency can be um, avoided. That is, we allow a type A to be dependent on a term P uh, only when P is a pure effect-free term. And this effectively um, avoids, the norm, avoids the backtracking and avoids the inconsistency. So this is the restriction that, that we need for undelimited control case. Okay, then what restriction do we need for delimited control? To answer this question, 
um, we compare del undelimited control and delimited control from the perspective of types. Suppose that we have a core CC expression surrounded by a context E. Um, according to the core by values operational semantics, um, we evaluate A in the context A, where we can use K, which is the functional representation of the context E. But this K is abortive. So whatever we do in the computation of A, this expression will eventually um, evaluate to the E applied to some value V. Even if we use, we use K, um, the surrounding context is aborted and we eventually get the E of V. And this means that if we think of the um, typing judgment for this expression, um, it, it is concerned with only the input type of the surrounding context E. In, in CPS, if you think of this as in CPS, um, we are only concerned with the input type of the surrounding context E, and we are not interested in what this E will return. On the other hand, if we think of, about the, um, the limited control, the situation becomes somewhat different. So we have now two contexts. Um, shift expression is surrounded by a delimited context F, and that is surrounded by a meta context E. And there is a reset operator in between these two contexts. Um, as before, the, we first evaluate A in an empty context where we can use K, which is the fu uh, functional representation of the delimited context F. But this um, continuation K is an ordinary function that returns and composes. So if we use um, K in the computation of A, then the return value of K must um, have the same type as, its, um, as the type its surrounding context requires. And also if the A eventually evaluates to V, then that V must have the type that is expected from the input type of the surrounding meta context. So this gives rise to this form of judgment where we need um, two more types to, um, uh, two more types, alpha and beta. These are called answer types. Uh, this alpha stands for the, um, um, the type of the return type of the continuation, while beta is the input type of the meta context. In CPS, this is expressed like this. So shift expression return, uh, receives, a con receives an alpha returning continuation and returns the final value of type beta. And logically, if we use, use the generalized form of negation, then it can be written as like this. And where two occurrences of empty types are replaced by uh, two answer types, alpha and beta. So if we use delimited con control, we have two um, additional answer types. And this gives rise to two new type dependencies. The first one is the alpha. A return type of continuation depends on the uh, argument x, and the other one is the final answer type beta can depend on uh, the continuation k. And it is not very hard to see that um, we, we cannot allow these two restrictions. We see them in order. So the first restriction is that we, we cannot re allow uh, continuations to be dependent. So continuation can be dependent by um, placing a shift, shift, shift expression as an argument in an argument position. And if the function position f has a de dependent type, then um, um, continuation becomes dependent. In this, in this case, if we write a typing judgment for 
this expression that <coughs> um, return type of continuation depends on uh, on x. However, this x is only available within the type of f. So this x excludes um, the um, current to the scope. So we cannot allow this kind of dependency. The second restriction is that we cannot use the continuation in a dependent manner. We, 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 we could use continuation in a dependent manner by passing the captured continuation k to a dependent function f. And in this case, if we write a typing judgment, then the final answer type depends on k, which, which resides outside its scope. k is meaningful only in the body of shift, the body a of shift, but k um, appears outside it, so we cannot allow this. Uh, kind of dependency. So to wrap up the discussion so far, we introduced two, um, um, two restrictions, and these two restrictions will um, make the two answer types closed. But th these restrictions are not all the things we need. We also need one more um, restriction where uh, the types cannot depend on impure terms. And this is required for c defining type-preserving CPS translation. Um, it is mandatory to define type-preserving CPS translation because it is used in the, um, it used to define the semantics of shift and reset. But this is not the new result. The recent work um, shows, um, extends and, and a dependent language with um, a weak form of delimited control. And this work also shows that the dependency, type dependency on impure terms must be avoided to um, define CPS translation. To see how this restriction is required, let us see the uh, dependent application, F of A which has the type B dependent on its argument A. If we tra CPS translate this expression, we obtain this one. And in this expression, this F of V has the type as shown there. And the point here is that in the target language, B depends on V. And this V is, does not appear in the source term. So this means that there is no way to define uh, type-preserving CP translation for this. And so we need to re somehow relate V to uh, the source term A. OK, so what does this V stand for? OK, um, if A is pure, then we know that A will not access its surrounding context. So in this case, um, the evaluation of A will eventually finish and return some value B. On the other hand, if A is impure, then A, will, A could um, access its current continuation and do arbitrary con um, computation. So in this case, we don't know what value will be returned there. So this, this observation shows that we need to think, uh, distinguish two cases when the A is pure and impure. So if when it, the argument A is pure, then we know that the value of A will be passed to its continuation. So that, that V will be the value of um, the CPS translation of A. In that, and this val of operator is um, defined as simply passing the identity function to it. And this corresponds to evaluating the um, argument A in in an empty context. And in this case, it is easy to define a type-preserving CPS translation because um, we can just replace the prob problematic V with A applied to identity. But if A is impure, then, then 
<coughs> and that D can have any values. For example, if A is a shift expression and it captures the current continuation and invokes it multiple times, then B can have multiple values. So in this case, there, <coughs> um, there is no way to um, define type preserving CBS translation. So this is why we need the third restriction saying that types must not depend on impure terms. If um, the argument is impure, then the function part f must be pure. And in that case, um, it has a non-dependent type b, and then after the CPS translation, it does not depend on its um, argument, so it, we can define CPS translation. This is the overview of our CPS translation. Um, the point is that for pure case, um, we introduce the answer type polymorphism. And because of this polymorphism, we can pass the identity to the CPS translation of, of A, and we can define the val of operator to define CPS translation. On the other hand, for the impure case, we do not, do not have such um, answer type polymorphism, but we don't need val of operator in the impure case, so this is fine. Okay, so for the past, over the past decades, we have been programming with shift and reset and de dependent types separately for various purposes. Um, this study shows that if we um, have these three restrictions, we can uh, combine them. We can have the best of both worlds. Namely, we, we should avoid dependent continuations, dependently used continuations, and type dependency, type dependent on impure term. With these restrictions, we can, um, for example, extend a, a dependent language like Coke and Agda using a uh, with shift and reset. That could be quite fascinating. If you are interested in that, please let us know. And finally, um, Yoyo is online, and she. Um, she's ready to take any questions, comments, feedbacks, and she'll, she's also ready to dis uh, discuss with you about the uh, dependent types and shift and reset. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so we have a, a number of questions here. Um, the first one, uh, are the restrictions one and two related to the split context context used for some linear dependent type systems? What, what context? Uh, for some linear dependent type con uh, systems. Split context. Well, I'm sorry, I don't know about that. I, I, don't, I don't think I can comment on that. Okay. So uh, I'll just turn on uh, to, uh, to another question, and uh, so someone will be able to just uh, put a follow-up question on the, uh, on the, on the uh, system here. Um, uh, let me see here. Um, reply to Artem. Our language has inductive types, and the approach should extend to polymorphic languages. That's a question from, uh, that's an answer from uh, Yuyu. Um, Okay. Answering that question uh, remotely. Great, the system works. Um, another question here, uh, does your approach apply to both uh, COC and CIC? Um, yes, I believe so. Um, you, you, you has already um, extended this with the inductive types and, and things going, is going well. I think she can comment more on that. Okay, thanks. Um, do you think your approach will extend to dependent algebraic effects and dependent effect handlers? I think it is not very um, easy to do that because, well, here we are in a good situation because shift and reset has a f solid foundation about on CPS translation, but for if we want to think about effect handlers, then you have to think about much more complicated things. So it, I, I don't think it is straightforward. 
Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, just a final question here. Um, what are some examples of applying your translation to a complete small program? In other words, are there some good small examples that you, that you tried out to, uh, where you also use dependent types for, for expressing properties about the program? And right now we haven't done it. This is quite a, a theoretical work. But in my mind, well, whenever I program in Agda or Agcock, um, when, if we want to do for any effect, you, we, we need to write that in monadic style. But if we have shift and reset, then we can do all the things in direct style, and that will be very um, useful. So that's why I, I'm doing this. Okay, uh, thank you very much. And um, uh, I should also thank Kenichi for, uh, for, for arranging so that you could come and, and present the work here. Uh, thanks.